So we started with this school, then we moved on to the General Assembly, and now we're hoping to take our message to a broader community, because I think this is a topic on which there's a lot of misinformation. The reason that I originally went into civil rights practice, the fundamental idea is that we are all equal. I think I became interested in teaching and writing about family law because of my own personal experiences with family. I was consider myself really fortunate for having grown up in a family environment that was extremely nurturing, an environment that abounds with love and support. My same-sex partner and I would like to create the same sort of environment for our family in the future. Families matter. Families matter tremendously. Nobody goes through life without experiencing some forms of the kind of, of dependency that in our society, families are a really important institution in meeting dependency needs. And what this amendment cuts to the heart of is whether we're going to uh, support all families in meeting those needs or just some. You know, rights respecting children with custody, caretaking, and adoption, family leave, disability payments, rights when one person is incapacitated in the hospital. You know, none of those rights can be extended to same-sex couples or even opposite-sex unmarried couples under this. We already have a same-sex marriage ban in North Carolina. What the amendment is is a same-sex marriage ban plus many additional consequences. These additional consequences include foreclosing the possibility of civil unions and statewide domestic partnerships in the future, taking away domestic partnership benefits that are offered by municipal governments already, but also the possibility of taking away domestic violence protections from um, all unmarried people in the state of North Carolina. And these additional consequences are not the type of consequences that I think most North Carolinians support. Um, so I see it as our job as educators to go out there and let people know that these additional consequences are what North Carolinians are going to be voting on on May 8th. If the majority can take rights from a sexual orientation minority, why can't the majority take away rights from a racial minority, a religious minority, or any other minority group through um, a simple constitutional amendment? As human beings, most if not all of us need and thrive on caring, loving relationships, right? And so the state should be uh, trying to foster loving and caring relationships. And what this amendment does is completely the opposite. You know, even if you think that, that heterosexual marriage is, you know, the, the best thing on the planet, you know, how, how could you not, for those folks who are in, in these other relationships, you know, not want at least for them to be treated humanely? That just seems so uncontroversial. Mm -hmm. So. Journalists are historians, uh, historians that are on the ground and documenting what is happening today. And I think it's important to know that there were people in this state who stood opposed to moving the state backwards. Uh, students 50 years from now need to have that message, just like students today know and learn that there were people opposed to slavery, to Jim Crow laws. There were people uh, in favor of women's suffrage. And the most important lesson that anybody can learn is that discrimination affects us all. Discriminatory laws affect us all. Constitutions which say a certain portion of the population are second-class citizens affect us all. Uh, certainly for the people who are discriminated against, um, they are having laws enforced against them. But there are people, in this case straight people, who will have to enforce these laws against their friends, against their family members, against their neighbors, even against their mothers or fathers or brothers or sisters, they will have to look these people in the eye, people near and dear to their hearts, and say, you are not equal. And while that does hurt gay people and lesbian people, bisexual people and transgender people, it also hurts straight people. Uh, it makes people see their fellow citizens and their neighbors as something less than, uh, and all of us are harmed uh, when we are forced to see people in a different light. I love helping people, and I love people, and I love kids. Dale and I adopted uh, almost 12 years ago, uh, and those little guys are my life. They are best friends and worst enemies and 
you know, they often have their scraps with each other like I did with my brothers when I was growing up, but, you know, ultimately they love each other. But suddenly, uh, you know, the rights that my kids are denied, um, they only have one legal parent. And I just feel like my family and other people's families too should have the same rights that others take for granted. And one of our twin boys uh, had to do a little project at school and it was about something that made him feel different. And he comes to me and he says, Daddy, I can't think of anything. And I said, well, how about the fact that you're Asian? And he said, no. And I said, well, how about the fact that you've got two dads? And he said, no. But I do think all of this being talked about uh, and him hearing things uh, makes him, him feel like our family is less valuable than some other families. And that does concern me. I was down in the Senate to listen to the so-called debates on the issue of this anti-gay amendment. Some of the things they were saying actually sounded like bullying. Kids that bully other kids learn this from adults, and this is an adult form of bullying, and it does affect kids, and it, in some cases, uh, you know, could lead to someone's eventual suicide. I've turned my birthday party into a fundraiser for the Heart Walk. This is my first turtle release. Um, we, ad we have an adoptee, his name is Chase. He'll be released in March. Mr. Bodie. Oh, hey! How are you? Oh my gosh, how are you? Oh, you're a family. Thank you. You're a part of the Peter family, whether you like it or not. Okay. Thank you. Wilmington taught me a lot about being um, less about the know-it-all and more about the w welcome it all um, and listening to people with different ideas. It helped me to be able to advocate more clearly about just being people. And so whether I'm on the housing authority or whether I'm working with substance abuse and mental health, whatever area I am at, I am Bodine, I'm gay, I have a wonderful partner, Love you. but I'm me. And that in itself is an act of presenting equality. But I have to give up this whole notion of I'm right, I'm in control, you know, I have to become willing. I had to become willing not to be prejudiced against certain things in my life. And then some peace came to that. I have to become willing to let go of some old ideas or some fear. Mostly it's fear. Maybe that's what happens with equality. We have to, we have to hope and help people become willing because we can't change their minds, but we can give them information that will bring them to a place that they can make a decision to become willing. Once they become willing to listen, then the rest can follow. That really is a revelation, helping them to become willing. In my opinion, preaching hate for me is just quite ungodly. We pray, God, that you will bless our pastor this yes. morning. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 For a topic this morning, I want to use the mistake of settling in Haran. Amen. As I have read the scriptures, I can't come up with anything that Jesus Christ himself has said to marginalize gay people. God instructs Abram to set out for the land of Canaan. Now, Abram was not only called to leave his homeland, but he was also called to leave his comfort zone behind. The, the thought is that as a result of the stand that I've taken and the stand that I will continue to take, that the church that I pastor will be taken away from me. I've come to tell you, don't you settle for Haran, that familiar place, when God wants you in Canaan, your place of promise. And this is a civil rights issue more than it is anything. It's a human rights issue. And all of us, rights belong to all of us. When he sends you on a mission, don't stop short until you reach your goal.
There were, during the civil rights struggle, some gay people that stood up and helped African Americans to become free. And certainly to come back and to help them now to become free, I don't think it takes anything away from who I am. You refuse to stop halfway through. We hear and we don't run from it. We, we sit, get an email from Equality North Carolina and instead of just going, eh, we actually click on it, we open it, and if it's, a, if it's a message that says respond to your legislature, we actually do it. You can help document this movement by updating your status on your Facebook page. Those personal conversations make a huge difference. No matter how much, whether it's $5 or $10 or $50, we can all do something. And uh, certainly, uh, I expect to do more because I'm in a position to. Don't stop short of your goal. It is absolutely essential that everyone participate with this at any level they possibly can. The forces who want to say, you're not equal and you'll never be, have much more resources than groups like Equality North Carolina. You're waiting for somebody else to, to do this, but it turns out that the people who have to do this are, are, are yourselves. Give that money to something that's going to be uh, uh, contributing something lasting for our state and for generations to come.